You an entrepreneur? You work on a great team? You an individual contributor? You want to be the boss? In this video, I'm going to show you how. So stay tuned for that. Author Gino Wickman came up with a book called How to Be a Great Boss and had some really good advice on determining if you're the right person for that and what goes into being a great boss. And I encourage you to read that. In this video, we're going to cover some pieces of it. Now, this is a multi-part series. I'm going to cover different aspects of how to be a great boss through a series of videos. There'll be two or three of them. So keep an eye out for them each week as they go live. Now, are you an individual contributor? a technologist, or are you a leader in your organization? In either case, there are certain things that you have to do if you want to be the boss or you want to have some authority over people in your group. And I hope to uncover these for you throughout these videos. For any role that you do, there are three things that are critical to determining whether or not you can do it well. The first is, do you get it? The second is, do you want it? And the third is, do you have the capacity to do it? Whether or not you get it is, do you have the aptitude? Do you have the ability? Do you have a natural understanding of the type of job it is? Whether or not you want it, well, do you have the desire to actually do the role? And capacity to do it, well, this is the emotional, intellectual, and physical and time capacity to do the job. The first thing is, let's talk about get it. You've probably worked with people before that they've been through training, they've been coached, but for some reason they just don't have a grasp on the job that they do. For those types of people, well, they just don't get it. Do you thoroughly have a grasp of the job? If you are looking to be the boss, do you have a grasp of what it takes to be a good boss? Do you have a natural ability? Do things come natural to you in dealing with people? These are fundamental to being a great boss. Now, you may get it. You may know exactly what it takes to be a good boss. Heck, you may even have the capacity to do it, but you might not necessarily want to do it. If your role is an individual contributor or a technical function or something where you're doing an activity that you really enjoy, you might not necessarily want to be the boss at this point in your career. You want to, may want to continue doing those things that, that bring you joy and excitement. Over time, things might change where you may want to move towards a leadership role. But an individual contributor, you have to make a decision. Do you really want it? And when it comes to having a role in an organization where you're leading a group of people, no one should talk you into it. You should genuinely want that responsibility. Challenges, day-to-day -day obstacles, these things, they should energize you. And I guess the real question is, do you have the fire in your belly to lead a team of people? This is you really wanting it. So it's great if you get it, and even better if you want it, but do you have the capacity for it? Now, if you don't want it or you don't get it, those are deal killers. No point in trying to be a boss. You don't want it or you don't get it. Problems with capacity, many of them can be solved. It might be that you know exactly what it takes to be a good boss and you really want to do it, but there are some areas that you need to grow. The fact is, we are all humans. We are all evolving and growing in our roles in business. And you may find that there are things that you need to improve. So what I thought I'd do right now is cover four aspects of capacity that you need to consider when you're determining whether you're ready to be the boss. The first is emotional capacity. That's the heart. Can you feel what other people are feeling? Can you empathize with other people? The second is intellectual capacity. That's critical thinking. That's problem solving. That's systemization, strategy. That's creating a sequence of events and creating priorities around things. Do you have the physical capacity? Do you have the stamina and the energy to do what it takes to finish what you start? And the final thing, well, that's time capacity. Do you have the self-discipline to use time effectively, to avoid the urgent, to prioritize, and to organize and delegate? These four types of capacity are necessary. Emotional, intellectual, physical, and time capacity. They're foundational to being a great boss. We're gonna do an exercise here. We're gonna determine what your day is like. We're gonna go over some of the activities a boss does, and we're gonna see where your skills and your day all fit together. In essence, we're trying to determine together, do you have the capacity and do you want it? 
So what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to pause. I'd like you to go to johnarnott.com slash boss or in the show notes for this video, you'll see a link to it. And you're going to find a few documents. So download those right now. Also get yourself a few sheets of paper. What you're going to do is you're going to write down all of the business related activities you do during the course of a day, a week, a month. I want you to take your time, be detailed. So pause the video right now and write down all of those activities and then unpause it when you've done that. Have you done it? Great. Okay. Now we have all the activities that you do. Look at the sheet that you got from the website called boss activities. It has a list of different things that a person would do and it's divided in two sections. On the left are more technical task oriented items and the right are more people items. I'd like you to look at each of those activities and any of those items listed there that you aren't currently doing or not on your current list that you did earlier, I want you to add those to your list. So pause the video right now and add the items from boss activities that are not currently on your list. Okay. Have you done it yet? Great. All right. So now we have a comprehensive list. It's a list of everything that you do plus all the things from the boss activities page that you aren't currently doing. So now find the sheet called delegate to elevate. This is a chart broken into four quadrants and we're trying to determine what are the things that you do well? What are the things you don't do well? What are the things you enjoy doing? What are the things you don't enjoy doing? And we broke it up into four quadrants. What you're going to do is you're going to take that, that sheet of paper where you wrote all your activities and the boss activities. Then you are going to fill in this delegate to elevate chart. You're going to write in there each activity and put it in the right quadrant. Now I, I encourage you, this is for you, not for anyone else. So be honest with yourself. If you're really not good at something, put it in the right box. If you really don't like doing something, put it in the right box. Okay. Pause the video now and fill out the delegate to elevate chart. Have you done it? You done? Okay. Excellent. Great. So now we have all of your activities broken into quadrants. So I want you to do is use the highlighter and grab that delegate to elevate chart and highlight the items that came from the boss activity sheet. This way you can get an idea of where the boss activities fit and see where you rated yourself. Our 80% of the boss activities above the horizontal line. If so, you already have the capacity, but if not, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. You can still work them towards that. Look at this list. Do you have the time to do all the items that you have in your list? If not, there's a time capacity issue. So it's time to look at delegating things. Start with the items in the bottom half that are taking too much of your time and look at those items. The items in the bottom half, there are two things you can do. You can find ways to delegate them or you can work on them so that you can do them yourself. But those items that you really don't enjoy doing, honestly, you need to find ways to delegate them. Now, the way you want to do this is first, you need to figure out how much you have to delegate. So you have to get a grasp of your hourly work target. Let's say you're targeting 50 hours. You want to work 50 hours a week, no more. How many things on your total list, including the items that are not uh, from the boss activity sheet, can you do in 50 hours? Now, how many hours would it take per week to do all of them? Is that 60? Is that 70? If it's 60 hours, you have 20% of your tasks that you need to find a way to delegate. And delegation is a key way to elevate everyone in the organization to be much more productive. And in the next video, we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about delegation and how to do it effectively. So take some time for yourself right now. Really look at those boss activities. Look at the quadrants that you've created and look at yourself within. Is this something that you're ready to pursue? If so, you have the tools to get started. I would also encourage you to do another thing. Now that you understand what it takes to be a boss, look at the person that you report to. Is there an opportunity to manage up? Is there an opportunity to fill in the gaps where maybe you know they're weak or they're not doing a great job or they just don't like doing it. Looking for opportunities 
to help your boss is a great way to elevate yourself organizationally and take on the responsibilities that you know aren't getting done or you know they just don't want to do. I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you on the next video so that we continue this process of becoming a great boss and we'll cover all the aspects of doing really good delegation. Thanks again for your time and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.